I am here uh, with uh, a team from the University of South Alabama of engineering and science researchers who are assisting the homeowners <clears throat> that were affected by this drinking water contamination incident understand what the chemical levels are in their drinking water and then what happens when they flush those chemicals out of their pipes. We're coming in unfunded to help mainly because there doesn't seem to be a mechanism yet where money can support this type of um, scientific need that this community uh, seriously deserves. We're talking with several organizations such as the National Science Foundation uh, and they have expressed a deep interest in, in helping respond to this uh, emerging, still developing uh, disaster where there is contaminated water still in plumbing systems and it has not been flushed. So far, uh, we have uh, visited several homeowners around Charleston, uh, home, homeowners from different walks of life, and we have interviewed those individuals. Uh, we're working with a nonprofit organization, and we have uh, made contact and entered those houses, um, talked with the individuals at length about the, the, their concerns, uh, and their health concerns, their, their infrastructure concerns, their pipe concerns. Uh, and then help them flush their systems if they haven't flushed it already. What we're doing with the water samples is we're, we're looking at uh, characteristics that the, the water company would look at, uh, water pH level, uh, chlorine or disinfectant level, but we're also uh, taking them back to our laboratory uh, and we're also sending samples to a third party laboratory to look for inorganic chemicals like metals as well as organic chemicals like the one that has been named in this incident as well as uh, we're bringing to bear, we have uh, six graduate students that have dedicated time to also look for other chemicals in the water. The, the houses and the homeowners that we have met um, and we've visited, there, is, there seems to be a pervasive distrust towards any information that's coming out from any authority associated with this spill, uh, whether it be the government or the utility. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that these individuals are, are have to move on with their lives, they have jobs, they have children that have to go to school, they have to give them baths, they have to uh, make decisions that affect their lives. And the fact of the matter is that there's been a series of events that have led to this distrust. I believe that uh, based on the fact that uh, a, a do not use order was lifted and then almost a day later there was a guidance issued that stated wait uh, pregnant individuals and children under three should not drink the water um, was, was one issue that made it uh, questionable of, of trust. Another trust issue the homeowners have is that uh, contaminated water was used to fill up the emergency water distribution stations and we actually have seen and been to people's houses who have that contaminated water. So they took out uh, their coolers and they went to the distribution system, distribution hub, received that uh, safe water, brought it back to their house, and then realized that it's the same contaminated water that they were told not to use. And so there's a series of events that have led to this distrust. And the individuals that we have talked to, the mothers, the, the daughters, the in-laws, the neighbors, have said that they want an external party to come in and provide some type of unbiased information. And that's not why we came here. What we came here is to help, and that seems what it is turning out to be. Of the ten houses we've been to so far, seven of them have not flushed their plumbing systems to date. So they were given the order to flush their plumbing systems about four or five days ago, and they simply haven't. Um, they have done that based out of fear of concern of bringing chemicals into their houses and they simply don't know what to do. If they don't flush their plumbing systems, what happens is water will continue to interact with their, their, their pipes behind their walls, their pipes below the floors, their pipes above them. And it could damage their pipes, uh, the chemical could, could sorb into plastics deeper than it would have if they didn't uh, remove all the chemical from it. So it will take a lot longer to clean those plumbing systems than it would plumbing systems that had been flushed earlier. If they don't discharge it, it could damage the plumbing system irreparably, possibly. It could leach metals excessively. Uh, it could uh, 
cause uh, mechanical or, or structurally um, degrade the materials that are in the system, the gaskets on their, their faucets. Uh, and so they really need to flush their plumbing systems if they haven't already. And not simply just flush the inside. We have been to some houses where they have, the homeowners have said, we flushed everything inside, but we just haven't flushed that spigot. Well, they have to flush the spigot. I know it's cold out, you have to do it. The, the sponge analogy is, if you take a dry sponge and you put it in a bowl of water, that sponge will, will basically absorb all of that water and it will become wet. And then you take that sponge out and you put it on your countertop. And it's going to take a lot longer for that water to evaporate or come out of that sponge than it took to get in that sponge. And that's what will likely happen with plumbing systems and the chemical, the contaminated water that's within the plumbing systems of Charleston, West Virginia. If your neighbor flushes their pipes and you don't, and you're upstream of your neighbor, it's possible that the water that you should have flushed out, the contaminated water, then gets moved on to your neighbor. And so while your neighbor flushed their pipes and cleaned it out, the water that you should have removed from the system is now being uh, withdrawn into their plumbing system. So it's important that everybody flush their plumbing systems if they're given the go-ahead to flush their plumbing systems. What I would advise homeowners to do, and this has uh, been uh, distributed across Facebook mostly, uh, is that they must open uh, all of their windows and exterior doors before they start flushing. Uh, because the chemicals, when they start flushing, will start accumulating in their house, and that's when you can experience some of these types of symptoms. Um, so by opening the windows and opening the doors, you can ventilate. Another uh, recommendation that we have is that people need to shut their water heater off before they start flushing. They need to shut their water heater off because hot water can smell more than cold water, and that's because chemicals can evaporate out. And so if you're flushing cold water throughout your house, you're less likely to have more chemicals build up in your house. And, and people have asked me, well, should my children be here when we do the flushing? Should my pets be here? Right? They, they're smaller, they're more susceptible to, to chemical exposure. And I have been telling people it's a personal decision. I have not seen any information out there that says that it's okay or not okay. Personally, I, I would uh, ask my uh, significant other to, to, to take our son someplace else while I did the flushing. I would like to add that um, this has been a pretty moving experience uh, being here. Um, traveling 873 miles, a uh, 15-hour car ride just to, to, to get on the ground and help people. Um, at the present time, we're not funded by anybody. Uh, we're doing this as pro bono work. Um, we have uh, four students here, uh, graduate students who basically left classes for a week, left their lives. Um, some of them were supposed to graduate in, in May, uh, which means they're falling behind on the ability to graduate. Um, but they're as committed uh, to helping. And there was another individual here, uh, Kevin White. He's a professor of environmental engineering at uh, University of South Alabama. And, and he also came out here to, to help. Um, and it's just been a moving experience, and I hope we can help in other capacities as uh, this uh, recovery unfolds.